All right, YouTube. So I'm here again, of course. And this is a quick little thingamajig on how to tighten your chain on a Suzuki DRZ 400E and how, you know, kind of wash your, just general maintenance on this bike. Cause every time I looked up a, uh, when I first got this bike, I had to look up how to adjust the chain. I had this type of thing with a little, I guess you can call this a conch shell thing, shaped uh, select gear thing selector. I didn't know how to do it. I looked in the owner's manual. So what you do is you, <clears throat> Go ahead and do this. This is a 24 uh, 24 millimeter focus, damn it. Socket. And there's a collar pin, should be a collar pin, right through here. Like that one. And you take that and you undo it. You put your bike on a stand. You undo, okay, first of all, you undo this stuff while the bike's still on the ground. I learned that our way more than once. Then you jack it up. And these are pretty cheap jacks at the Harbor Freight. And you just kind of tighten it or loosen it accordingly. And you gotta match them on each side. So you see right here I got my I got three. Got the bump there. Bump there. So two bumps away from number three. I don't know how that's unscientific I know. And come over here. Same thing I did. Bump, three, bump. Before it was like down here. So it was just a little bit too loose. You can see about, that's about as much slack as you're gonna want. Even this is considered a bit tight. Oh well. Then you lower it back down. And uh, so that's that. And next thing you want to do is like, want to wash this bike because it's kind of dirty and whatnot from over the time I've had it. So what you're going to do, you want to make sure your bike's cool for, or cooled off. Now I have a little thing that tells me the bike is this hot, 120 degrees. About around there is what you want to do. But here's how you do it if you don't have one of these. So you take your knuckle and your index finger. You just kind of press it up against certain parts of the motor. You hold it for, 10, for about five seconds. Without burning it, you're good. So that's fine. It's gonna start burning after a little while, but it's okay for right now. At least I'm demonstrating it. You go to the other side. Right here on the crankcase, this is gonna be pretty warm. I'm not actually timing this, but I'm just kind of demonstrating. The exhaust does not count, in my opinion. Although you can do it if you want, but it's going to be the hardest part of the entire fucking bike. And what you're going to want to do is, if you do have this stuff, if you're going to clean it, you're going to need the supplies. I should have laid this out before I did it. <clears throat> there we go. So you can get this from FMF, or you can probably buy a cheaper one on eBay, but we had I had an FMF pipe on my older bikes. You just kind of shut up there. They call it the, I don't know why you call these exhaust pipe plugs or whatever. I call it butt plug just for laughs, shits and giggles. So you're going to want that. And then you're going to take some simple green, or in my case, purple power. And you're going to spray down parts of the plastics. Do not, I mean do not spray down the motor, the chain. Do not spray down anything that involves the mechanical part, the electrical part. And try to stay away from the tops of the uh, plastics and the seat. Stay away from that stuff, but stuff like underneath here, see all that goodness? You can spray that down. And the wheel here, sure thing. Part of the swing arm, why not? The motor, don't touch it. You can just kind of pressure wash that out, I guess. And last thing you're gonna need, I got kind of this damn thing. I'll buy supplies, oh, it's unlocked. So I use this every time I clean my bike. It's uh, it's not actual spray paint, but it's like a little bit, of, it's like wax you put on your bike. And it just cleans up so much better than it does. I don't have the editing swap, software, really, <clears throat> software to edit before and after, but the difference is just like, wow. It looks like a brand new bike almost, except for the fact that that one's a complete piece of shit. 
I mean, it sort of is and isn't. Same way, you're gonna wash it down. You just use all those tips, and you should be all right. Also, if you own a uh, DRZ or in some other bikes, I guess instances, if the bike does not read any oil on the dipstick, which is right here, and you haven't ridden it for a while, which I have, and I stopped riding it for about a week, the oil in this case collected at the bottom right here, the crankcase. I thought it was empty, so I almost added too much. I almost decided to add oil over there. There it is. I was going to add oil to this, but then I read up, oh, try starting it for like five seconds, just let it run. So I did, and everything's back to normal. So if your bike looks low in oil, look it up. Depending on what model it is, this is again, DRZ 400 Suzuki. And go, and go, you know, play by ear from there. And don't just go after the first hit you get. Oh, and another thing, when you do get done washing it, be sure to the bike. Be sure, be sure to remove that because that could cause problems having your exhaust pipe plugged up with a big old butt, butt plug. <laughs> I can't see much depth perception by the ca by the camera. So that's it for right now. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll have more updates coming on the most glorious Suzuki right here. Like, I'm going to camo this bike out. It's going to be desert storm. It's going to be sort of a deserty camo because I live in the desert. I'm not going to try to paint around all the stickers and stuff, but it should turn out pretty sweet. If everything goes right. It probably won't. Goodbye.